Greetings. Today's discussion focuses on LG Chem uh, is one of several competitors that are now offering solutions that impact Tesla and its future. Uh, we explore whether or not the combination of Daimler-Benz, GM, uh, Nissan, and the other customers of LG Chem potentially put the, the Tesla miracle in jeopardy. The second thing we explore today is the fact that uh, the Model 3, uh, one of the threats to the future of the Model 3 has been defined as the fact that there's a huge number of customers that are well-to-do and whether or not all those customers are wiped out with the orders that have already been presented for the Model 3. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Thanks once again for joining us. If this is your first time on our channel, please take time to like and subscribe. If you're a repeat visitor, welcome back. Uh, please also note we're on Patreon and could use your support there. And also note that we do have ads. So by watching eight or nine seconds, it's helpful to support the channel's uh, current and future viability uh, so that we can you know, continue to provide uh, great info to you. Now, there has uh, there's a guy named Bob Lutz, and Bob Lutz predicted that Tesla has nothing unique, and that uh, they would be sort of beaten by GM, uh, Daimler, and others eventually. Part of the process of how there's a prediction that this would work is that the current business model for Tesla is to what's called vertically integrate. And this means that um, in a lot, sort of the contrast of this is GM is 25% vertically integrated, Tesla's 80% vertically integrated, particularly with the battery being the most important issue. So one of the assessments has been that Tesla would go out of business because competing entities would simply buy batteries elsewhere and because they didn't have the costs associated with building their own batteries, they basically have a better business model to Tesla. So sort of the biggest entity as a competitor to Tesla's business model right now is a company called LG Chem, uh, which is a Korean company. And according to the material that we've read, they're supplying batteries to Jaguar, GM, Daimler, um, Renault, as well as Nissan and would not be surprised to learn that they're also providing battery packs to others. As we've covered previously, they actually are um, doing a type of battery called a packet system versus the system that uh, Elon Musk and company are doing. And the olden days packets that have been in the older Nissans uh, ended up with severe heat related issues which resulted in huge amounts of battery degradation and therefore after getting to the three-year warranty many owners were finding that they had a li as little as 40 miles of range remaining on their vehicles so what's interesting to me is is that Bob Lutz was suggesting that eventually there would be this transition that occurs that results in Elon Musk and company kind of being put out of business because competing companies could simply buy high quality batteries from competing firms and then blow te Tesla out of the water. The answer to that has been, uh, you know, it's entirely possible that this could occur. Part of the response Tesla has given recently is to say, look, um, we recognize the threat of the competitors that are out there, but that competition is of little consequence currently, and therefore we're moving along the path that we are. One of Tesla's response to this competitive threats has been to announce the coming version three of the supercharger because the time to charge in the supercharger network is one of the variables that leaves an opening for competing entities. And so, one would say that Tesla is responding to that with version three of the supercharger coming out. The second thing that's coming up, uh, so 
we're framing the dialogue today about whether or not the Tesla model will work going forward. Now, uh, Bob Lutz and others have said it won't work because you simply have very large dollars from all the other integrated auto companies that will be put towards sort of building a competing viable battery. And, you know, one would have to say that Tesla is two years into a five year advantage. Uh, the battery being built by LG Chem is of decent quality, uh, but the problem is that it's a packet and nobody knows how long, uh, or, or pouch, uh, nobody lo knows how long those pouches will last. Um, uh, interesting, um, hmm, I, uh, I was distracted by a question posed there, I'll continue and address that issue at the end because I think it's a great question. Um, so moving right along, I wanted to highlight the fact that, uh, you know, basically um, there's a question mark about Tesla's business model and will it work as you see an onslaught of competitors line up with companies like LG Chem? And the answer to that is, um, is that uh, right now, there is no problem to be solved because at the end of the day, um, while competitors are all lining up with one company, LG Chem, you know, one could argue that there's one to two million cars worth of demand currently that's rising for electric vehicles. And the fact of the matter is that uh, there are, while competitors are producing batteries, they're having difficulty producing batteries at scale and so what this means then is that we're in the one to two year time frame before we see volume numbers of, of competing vehicles. And then we're probably two or three years away from seeing volume amounts of competing vehicles with comparable statistics to Tesla in terms of range, performance, et cetera. So, you know, Tesla, as we all know, has not stood still at any point and will continue to improve what they do. And, uh, competitors aren't going to disappear, but there's also the issue of the fact that there's a huge amount of demand that's out there and that demand, uh, you know, will over time be addressed by uh, Tesla and others. But one of the reasons why Tesla has made their patents open to be used by LG and others is that it causes a more rapid transition to EVs than might otherwise be done. And so therefore, I think that um, it's an interesting circumstance because the competitors are being framed as bad news for Tesla and Tesla has done a lot to help to fuel the competition because they simply don't have the resources or ability to build uh, the electric solution that they offer fast enough. Um, the, uh, the sort of next area I want to cover that I really didn't put in is there's an interesting phenomenon happening right now that I think we're going to see over the next six months to two years. And that is that because of an initiative from the Chinese government, there's a process going on right now where uh, Tesla is in China, at least in, in at least 20 cities, there are two brand new EV manufacturers that have started and are in motion. What's interesting about this is that not only do you have the Chinese companies like NIO that have gone public, but you also have other entities that are building vehicles as well. This I think has been part of the plan of Tesla is to help fuel sort of a, a revolution of the number of manufacturers. And I believe that, you know, it's a good thing that any and all companies are building products and I, I think that Tesla can, can remain competitive regardless of what those threats might be, uh, be it Rivian. I'm actually looking forward to finding out which of the Chinese companies have not gone public yet that have good solutions that consumers are buying in China that might be viable on the world stage. Uh, we don't know that yet, but as we see more of these companies come to the public markets, we'll have a better feel for their products and services and whether or not consumers are responding well to those product offerings. So uh, bottom line is that 
there are competitors. Tesla is anticipating those competitors because they're helping fuel those competitors. And I think it sets up for making a huge difference for the planet in the process. Um, you know, the, uh, you know, excellent point. I mean, right now the problem that's going on is just like what Tesla had in terms of why they're building batteries. There just aren't enough batteries being manufactured around the world to service the need and demand from EVs. And, you know, I think the big news that occurred yesterday was an announcement that uh, the folks at uh, FedEx were going to be buying a thousand thousands of electric delivery vans to address um, the pollution standards that that they have to meet. And so I really think it shows a mandate for building more EVs of different types to address the pollution impact that they're having. Um, so I wanted to sort of finish up in this segment and move on to our next segment of our discussion, which was, I, I think there's an interesting question mark in the auto industry right now is, are the Model 3 buyers nuts? One of the things I've been watching for is to determine if Model 3 buyers have a sensation of having lost out on luxury appointments from 50 to $60,000 vehicles from BMW or VW or others that they currently don't get with the Model 3. And it, it's been a resounding um, no sense of loss and extreme happiness with their Model 3s. Um, this kind of comes into mind because I actually had an exchange on our last show with a gentleman who was referencing the fact that you can actually buy a 248 mile in range uh, GM Bolt for about $35,000. And there are a lot of people paying basically double that. The average price right now of the Model 3s being configured is $59,000. So even with their parts issues and even with some of the other issues that the Model 3s have, you're still seeing uh, folks who could pay more and have other um, com uh, co regular combustion or even EV companies that are cheaper. They're saying that the value proposition that Tesla represents is solid enough for us to go forward and be happy with, you know, that product circumstance. So I think this is kind of an interesting situation because, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of shocked because most uh, buyers of vehicles as they upgrade tend to want more amenities like what are offered by the big BMWs, et cetera. And uh, the Model 3 is proving to be uh, a satisfactory solution for demand that people have for that vehicle. Um, uh, interesting. Uh, <laughs> thanks for that comment regarding sense of loss uh, in capital. I want to next address a comment that was just shared, with, which is to highlight problems and bugs to Tesla as they come up. Uh, there are kind of three suggestions I make. One is Reddit uh, under the type of vehicle that you have because those boards are being read by the uh, the folks at Tesla. Two is to tweet at Elon regarding issues that you've encountered. Three um, is to um, also highlight them on pages like this because as other owners know about it, they know um, the type of issues they might want, might want to address, etc. So I appreciate the uh, question regarding bugs. I definitely think there'll be uh, many of them to be addressed, particularly on the Model 3 as it stabilizes. Um, I do think that from what I'm understanding, um, the, the, uh, the performance version is being built in the tent right now in a one-off situation. So if there are going to be any defects, I would expect it likely to show up there because you don't have an automated line off of which the cars are coming so that any changes in what's done to the car will be noted immediately and therefore um, one-off builds in the, uh, in the tent are likely to introduce issues that are different for each car that might come through the line, depending on perhaps something might have, have occurred with the human uh, person that was putting that car together. Um, the, uh, the next show that we're sort of planning really focuses on, uh, gives us an opportunity to stretch out and have a conversation um, 
Thanks for the comment there, Sean, regarding GA4. Um, you know, <laughs> thanks for the comment also, Thaddeus, regarding loss of capital, not loss of uh, quality of car experience. Um, I'm, uh, so at any rate, uh, we like to sort of use the time that you share with us carefully. Uh, we tend not to go over time uh, if there isn't a lot more to add. Uh, I'm kind of excited right now, one, because we got some good sunlight in our initial part of our show regarding times of day to shoot. Number two, I just got uh, two hand weights here, four pounds a piece. It works out to, you know, it's, it's only four pounds rather than the five, but I've started getting my leg lifts, 20 leg lifts per leg per day done as part of the goal of strengthening quad muscles we talked about. So I wanted to encourage all of you to consider the same the weights are eight bucks at Walmart in this configuration, and they have a little strap that normally go around your hand that you can put around your feet. So for those of you who are really paying attention, please take time to do your 20 leg lifts uh, a day if possible. The second thing is a reminder, don't go to bed within two hours of e eating, preferably four hours to let it all digest. Also wanted to encourage you um, to try to get a half hour walk in, a, a power walk in, in a day to maintain health there and an omega-3 wouldn't be a bad idea either. Um, wanted to thank uh, Brada Donovan and Thaddeus and uh, Sean, et cetera, for your comments. I actually totally agree about the defects. It'd be nice for people to, as a group, know what the defects are and be able to address them. So I think it's a great suggestion that you're making. I'm also open to, um, you know, sort of a consumer reports uh, angle to this where we could collect you know all the issues people have been having and note uh, what everybody's problem is having and how Tesla solved it uh, and how they expeditiously got that solved so that those solutions can be shared with others so we'll have to figure this out and any suggestions from you guys in the comments below would be greatly appreciated um, any rate um, wanted to again thank you for your your uh, time and visit. Reminder, please like and subscribe. I uh, would also appreciate support on Patreon if possible. Hit the bell icon so you don't miss anything. And we'll be happy to highlight issues that you've identified to the folks that we have access to at Tesla also. Once again, this is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Tschüss, um, German, au revoir, French, Lehit uh, Hebrew, Choda Hafez, Farsi, Farvel, Dutch, um, Ni hao ma, Chinese. Uh, Sean, we actually have our link for Patreon listed um, on the bottom of, if you look at uh, um, this page, you'll see that we list uh, there. I think it's under Tesla Advisor, but uh, we do have our link list listed there. Uh, happy to, uh, to get that to you. And want to thank you for all of your support and interest in what we cover. Hope you have a great day and your holiday season is going well. Um, look forward to our next conversation. It's time for trucks and looking forward to uh, sharing some really interesting stuff going on in that regard. Have a great day. Bye.